Welcome to Things You Don't Know, the podcast that looks at little-known facts about well-known people and events, little-known people and events, and the impact they have had and always seeks to entertain. Today, we're going to look at the author A.A. A. Milne, a topic suggested by one of our subscribers, David Grashorn. We were not able to definitively discover whether his name is properly can, pronounced Milne or Milne. Dave and I went to high school together back at J.P. Stevens in the Dark Ages. I'm pleased to bring his idea to our listeners. Dave, maybe you would share with our listeners why you wanted to bring this well-known author to the podcast. Of course, Dr. Demine. I'd be honored. As you know, while I was traveling from Chicago back to New Jersey, listening to your Caesar Drake podcast, I found your voice to remind me very much of Winnie the Pooh. And I'm sure this is true for many people, how much I enjoyed reading and listening to those adventures, the thoughts, the feelings of that iconic fictional bear. I thought, there must be a lot of information and backstory that's just not well known. And you do a good job of uncovering those kind of things and thought it'd be interesting to know more. Hey, Milne was a very prominent writer in multiple genres and mediums of writing. He wrote plays, poetry, screenplays, and detective novels, as well as political and spiritual writings and humor for Punch magazine. He was most well-known for his Winnie the Pooh series of children's stories based on his sons, Christopher Robin's stuffed animals. Some of the stuffed toys were actually based on one of Christopher Robin's friends, the son of illustrator Frank Shepard. This little bear reached all parts of the world. In fact, Winnie the Pooh was translated into several languages, including Latin, and it became the very first foreign language book to make the New York Times bestseller mm -hmm. list. When I took Latin, one of the first texts we had to translate was a Winnie the Pooh story. Many of the things in the Winnie the Pooh books were clearly based on things in the real world, such as the 100-acre wood being based on the 500-acre wood, which exists and also has a commemorative statue in it today. Milne is a very interesting person. During the First World War, he served in the British Army and was gassed at the Battle of the Somme in 1915. After his injury... He earned a lieutenant's commission and became an intelligence officer, writing propaganda concerning Imperial German support for the 1916 Irish Rising, as well as the Communists in Russia. Lee's early literary career focused on mystery writing. His most famous story of the mystery genre, entitled The Red House Mystery, remains popular even today, having been reprinted over 20 times. Regrettably, 30 years later, he lost his best friend, the famous author P.G. Wodehouse. Wodehouse had been captured by the Nazis when they conquered France. Nazi propagandists took him to Berlin, where he made a series of light-hearted broadcasts. Milne denounced his former friend as a humorist whose license needed withdrawing. Wodehouse was defended after the war by... George Orwell and Ernest Hemingway as being a pawn of the Vichy secret police. Years later, Milne tried to befriend Wodehouse, but Wodehouse was so embittered he refused. In his famous statement, I was defended by an American drunk and a confused British socialist, but not my best friend. Some have thought Milne may have been jealous because Wodehouse was remembered for multiple pieces of literature, while people wanted more Winnie the Pooh stories from Milne. His last years were very unhappy. Milne's son, Christopher Robin, felt exploited and resented the stories of his childhood being commercialized. How did these stories come about? His initial success was as a political humorist for the magazine Punch. He wrote articles accompanying famous cartoons, including a 1912 sketch of Winston Churchill, then serving as Home Secretary, dressed as the butler of Prime Minister Herbert Asquith. Repeatedly throughout his career, Milne would achieve acclaim in one genre of writing despite being warned away from it. 
he came to believe in the moral necessity of using force to destroy the Axis powers, despite being a pacifist. His most famous adult book was 1940's War with Honor, a reprint and revision of his book Peace with Honor in 1934, which had announced the Versailles Treaty that ended World War I. His mercurial wife may have suffered from some form of mental illness, including a morphine addiction. Milne was forced to give a great deal of time and attention to the care of his wife. Milne's wife was unable to give as much care for her son as was the norm, and this unfortunate circumstance required Milne to play a larger role than most fathers of that era did in the upbringing of his son Christopher Robert. His son's resentment at his childhood stories being commercialized probably came from the fact that he was cruelly mocked at his boarding school. His classmates got hold of a recording of him reciting some poems by Milne as a child and made fun of him, playing the record repeatedly. Christopher Robin got a hold of the recording and broke it in a hundred pieces. It was a gesture of atonement that Milne pulled strings to get his son into the military during World War II. Milne himself served in the domestic security force known as the Home Guard in the Second World War. The guard was responsible for defending the UK against the German invasion, as well as extracting intelligence details from captured German and Italian Axis pilots and trying to turn spies. Christopher Robin was very embittered with his father throughout his life. The problems with his family of origin were drastically enhanced when Christopher Robin decided to marry his first cousin, Leslie, quite over the objections of his family due to the social factors and the risk of them producing a handicapped child. They did have a child that they named Claire, who was significantly handicapped. She became an activist for the rights of the handicapped. The rift between Christopher Robin and his mother was quite pervasive. When Alexander A. Milne died, Christopher showed up for the burial dress poorly and stayed apart from his mother. His mother was so upset she had a statue of Christopher Robin buried on her property so she would never have to lay eyes upon his likeness again. Winnie the Pooh, the most prominent character, was based on a real bear that had been adopted by the London Zoo and named after Lieutenant Harry Colburn, a Canadian soldier, and the name Winnie came from his hometown, Winnipeg. The Pooh part of the famous bear's name came from what Christopher Robin called a swan residing in a pond near his home. Everyone fell in love with the stuffed bear from the books, just as they did with Winnie the bear given to the London Zoo by Colburn. The real-life bear, Winnie, had been the mascot of Colburn's unit. Winnie was a black female bear who was so tame that she carried children uh, for rides on her back. (laughs) Interesting, huh? Uh, Milne's Winnie the Pooh series was a departure from the traditional children's stories because he wrote from a child's perspective and did not push the didactic style of presenting a lesson or moral in every story such as was the case with typical fairy tales like Grimm's and Mother Goose, etc. Still, he presented more subtle, but no less important, messages to children, essentially saying that children have the right to their thoughts, and he gave de facto permission to children to accept their feelings and differences. There are various reports on the web suggesting that each character in Winnie the Pooh represents a different mental disorder. So what are they, and is it true? These reports stem from an article by the Canadian Medical Association, which diagnosed, read that in quotes, each character. Since the DSM, which is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, was not published until 1952, with many later uh, revisions, It's very unlikely that Milne 
uh, was directing his characters to portray disorders that he had not that had not been codified at the time he was writing. He wrote the books in the, in 1925. For example, the idea of learning disabilities was not introduced until 1963. Milne was good, but I doubt that he was able to predict psychological terminology 40 years in advance. However, he may well have been ahead of his time in recognizing that some children have specific issues which can cause them difficulties in their everyday lives and Winnie the Pooh characters may well have been based on these observed differences. It's not likely that we'll ever know for sure. Just for fun, here are some of the diagnoses that have been suggested. Winnie the Pooh suggested that he had an eating disorder, as well as Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD, meaning it is very hard to focus. He also had impulsivity and obsessive fixations. Piglet, his buddy, uh, has been cited as having generalized anxiety disorder. The theory states that he may have suffered from an injury that crippled his self-esteem and that his stuttering problem most likely developed from that injury. Owl, another character, uh, was said to have dyslexia and short-term memory loss. Even though he is shown as being exceptionally bright, it is shown that he has trouble reading. An example would be in Pooh's Grand Adventure when he mistook the word school for skull. Also, Al tends to forget things as quickly as he says them. Another character, Tigger, is said to have another form of ADHD. Tigger is always seen bouncing and can never stay in one place for a long period of time. Kanga, that famous kangaroo character, uh, is said to have social anxiety disorder. She is very overprotective of her son, and she would never let his son make his own decisions because of her overprotectiveness. Rue, Kanga's son, uh, is said to have autism. He lacks awareness of danger and has an attachment to sitting in his mother's pouch. Rabbit, that interesting little bunny rabbit, said to have obsessive compulsive disorder or OCD. He is very orderly and obsessive. And the theory also questions his sexual orientation due to his feminine behavior. Eeyore, that donkey. He is said to have depressive disorder. He always has a bleak outlook on life and never feels any positive emotions like happiness and excitement. And then we come to the most startling one of all, Christopher Robin. Some say he had schizophrenia. It is believed that all the characters from above are manifested depending on Christopher's mood. I say that this is specious. I do not believe that uh, you can diagnose uh, fictional characters with any kind of accuracy, nor do I believe that Milne was particularly gifted or learned in that area. So I doubt that it's the case at all. At any rate, we hope you've enjoyed this brief trip through the Hundred Acre Woods, and we hope that you'll join us for future podcasts. We have some really exciting ideas coming up. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. Catch you later.